from Philadelphia. Yo, democracy, we did it. It's the 2016 Democratic National Convention. Let's not get crazy. Night four. Can we please just vote now? Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to The Daily Show. I'm Trevor Noah. And man, what an exciting week. We've been covering the Democratic National Convention here in Philadelphia. And it has been so much fun. Everyone, thank you so much for having us. This is officially our last show here, and uh, we're ending the week off. We're ending it off with a, with a great guest, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker is joining us, everybody. I couldn't be more excited. Couldn't be more excited. But let's, let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. Last night was officially the end of the Democratic National Convention, and uh, Hillary was excited that she was finally the nominee, and uh, Bill Clinton was just as excited <laughs> that there were balloons. <laughs> Look how happy he is! <laughs> he looks high! Look at his face! Look at his face! He's like, I, I can't believe all these balloons! Wow, the blue ones and the... <laughs> He's so excited! And you know what, you know what? After recent events in the news and the negative rhetoric at the conventions, and, you know, especially in Cleveland, we... I feel like we all need balloons in our life, you know? Yeah, that, because... I understand Bill Clinton. There's no situation in which a balloon is a negative thing. <laughs> Balloons bring out the best in us. We laugh, we feel like kids again. In fact, in fact, maybe instead of dropping bombs in the Middle East, maybe America should try dropping balloons just once. <laughs> just once. See what happens. Yeah, because, like, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? I bet even militants would be like, we must destroy America. Oh, look, balloons, balloons, <laughs> balloons. I'm going to make a bunny, I'm going to make a bunny. Yeah. And then that way, if America misses its target, it's not gonna be such a bad thing. You know, you'd be watching, like, the BBC News and they'd be like, today, 42 civilians were senselessly cheered up by an American balloon strike. <laughs> it's different ways. And I will tell you, I will tell you, there is someone who needs balloons in his life. Donald Trump. <laughs> because at the DNC, Michael Bloomberg dropped a Donald Trump diss track. Trump says he wants to run the nation like he's running his business? God help us. I'm a New Yorker, and I know a con when I see one. Truth be told, the richest thing about Donald Trump is his hypocrisy. Right, so, so, so we covered this on the show yesterday, and one of the biggest discussions this election year has been, does Donald Trump have the temperament to be president? Because being a president, especially of a nation in control of nuclear weapons, requires that you have measured responses. As a leader of democracy, you can't just lose your <laughs> at the slightest provocation. <laughs> it appears, though, Cinnamon Hitler didn't get the memo. <laughs> because... <laughs> after watching that speech, he responded like this. I wanted to hit a couple of those speakers so hard I would have hit them. No, no. I was gonna hit them, so I was all set. And then I got a call from a highly respected governor. How's it going, Donald? I said, well, it's going good, but they're really saying bad things about me. I'm gonna hit them so hard. I was gonna hit one guy in particular, a very little guy. I was gonna hit this guy so hard, his head would spin, he wouldn't know what the hell happened. You can bait Donald Trump into anything. Hey, Donald, I bet your hands are too small to give me a hand job. And he'll be like, oh, yeah? Drop those pants. Drop those pants. Your orgasm's gonna be huge. Your, give me your, your orgasm's gonna be huge. Huge. Oh, and by, and by the way, actually, that, that was something I, I noticed watching Donald Trump. Watch him when he speaks. It, it looks like he's always, he's always jacking off two tiny penises. <laughs> when he speaks. Just watch out for that. <laughs> anyway. Let's move on to the substance of the convention. Now, the DNC may be over, but we are still here in Philadelphia, and that's because we refuse to leave this great city. We refuse to leave this great city until we separate the truth from the lies. And also because Thursday flights were fully booked. So, <laughs> we turn now to Desi Lydic with What the Actual Facts.
ever, what a historic week. For the first time in American history, a presidential nominee was told to smile more. <laughs> and now that the euphoria around the Democratic National Convention has slightly subsided, let's take a minute to analyze some of the speeches from this week. Wall Street, corporations, and the super rich are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. When more than 90% of the gains have gone to the top 1%, that's where the money is. And we are going to follow the money. Now, quick side note, follow the money is also a sex game that Donald plays with Melania. <laughs> You never know where the money will lead. <laughs> but it always leads same place. <laughs> now, Hillary says that 90% of income gains have gone to the top 1%. And that statistic was true in the first years after the recession. But not anymore. If we look at the latest data, only 52% of income now goes to the richest 1% of the population. So, Hillary's claim is partly true. Because while this situation is bad, it's not as bad as it was in 2012. So I give it Lindsay Lohan's drinking problem. <laughs> Move on to everyone's coolest social studies teacher, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Washington works great for those at the top. When giant ta companies wanted more tax loopholes, Washington got it done. Now, Elizabeth Warren is accusing Congress of working with big business to pass, pass tax loopholes. And she knows all about that because she supported a tax loophole that helped medical device companies in her state. So even though Warren's claim is true, she's complaining about something and pretending like she's not in on it. So she deserves a Taylor Swift. <laughs> like a well-to-do gay couple. Let's move to Chelsea. Our son, Aiden, is five and a half weeks old. And we are so thankful that he's healthy and thriving. And well, we're a little biased, but we think he's just about the cutest baby in the world. Oh, that is a cute baby. But is it the cutest baby in the world? No. My baby is. <laughs> Finally, we move on to one of the most remarkable speakers of the week, First Lady Michelle Obama. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. That somehow we need to make it great again. Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. The greatest country on earth. This one's tough. Technically, America is 36th in math, 27th in literacy, and 41st in life expectancy. But the first lady specifically said right now, which meant right then, the moment Michelle Obama was speaking. <laughs> and yeah, during that nonstop mic drop of a speech, America was the greatest country on earth. This statement is true, but only in the exact moment it was said. Like saying, I love you mid-orgasm. <laughs> Trevor. Thank you, Desi. Desi Lydic, everybody. Now, now there have been a lot of narratives. There have been a lot of narratives coming out of this week's DNC. And uh, for help figuring out the real story, we're joined now by senior political correspondents, Jordan Klepper, Hassan Minaj, and Adam Lowitz, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, Jordan, you've been watching all week. What's the best way to sum up the Clinton campaign? Trevor, let me put this in a way Philadelphians can identify with. <laughs> Hillary Clinton proved this week that she is just like Rocky Balboa. Do you have uh, Rocky in Africa? Of course we have Rocky in Africa, Jordan. <laughs> We've had it for like three years. Perfect. <laughs> So think about it. Hillary and Rocky are both lefty scrappers who get no respect. They both have an old guy who used to criticize them, <laughs> but is now right in their corner. And now Hillary is going to train hard, earn our support, and prove she's the one who can go the distance. 
Ba 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 you realize Rocky loses. Does he? <laughs> I never get past the training montage. <laughs> I just get so jazzed, I jump up, do like 20 jumping jacks, and pass out. All right. You know what? That was very unhelpful. Uh, let's go to Hassan Minaj right now, everybody. Uh, Hassan, what is your take <laughs> on Hillary? Trevor, I gotta disagree with Jordan. Hillary Clinton is not Rocky. She's Rocky too. She got beat by the black guy last time, and now she is ready for her second shot at the title. Yeah. Yeah. Despite setbacks and the smear campaign being run against her, this time she will beat the odds and win. Bum 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 Guys, 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 stop! Guys, stop, 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 please. Come on, have some control. Let's go to Adam Lowett now. Adam, thank you for joining us. Hopefully. You can add some substance to this conversation. Yeah, with pleasure. Look, I'm sorry. This pandering is ridiculous, all right? Come on, crowbarring Hillary into some dumb old boxing movie narrative just because we're in Philadelphia? You know what, Adam? I'm glad that you see it this way. So how would you sum up Hillary's campaign? Easy. It's Rocky Three. <laughs> Hillary is rich and overconfident, and she's going to lose in an upset to an angry bully with weird hair who everyone calls Mr. T. Rocky Four. <laughs> I got it, it's Rocky IV. Yeah, Rocky IV! Donald Trump is a monster backed by Russia, and he's embarrassing America in front of the entire world. Yeah. So now, exactly. And now, perfect. And now Hillary Clinton is gonna pull America back from the brink by training in those harsh conditions. Okay, okay guys, yeah, you're not... Pulling off a huge victory in front of the whole world. <laughs> Hey there, it's The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. We have our own YouTube channel now, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll wait so you can... I won't even look, just because I know that's weird. It's sort of like when a dog's doing its thing. You can just... Yeah, just subscribe. I won't, I won't look.